Of course, the very streamer thing for me to do is to say what's up uh, when my mic is muted, even on my OBS it was muted, like, yeah, that's that's really great. So, first of all, thank you for stopping by twitch.tv forward slash Marie underscore shadows. Uh, thank you for, you know, wanting to come in and listen to me chat about professional wrestling. I miss you guys so, 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 so much. I have been basically... <laughs> man i was struggling <laughs> to stay up with with the damn show man i was so before we get into that i just want to let you guys know that i have been working extremely hard on uh a substack newsletter um i will say here that i went back to substack uh just because now they have a lot of cool features where like i can embed videos uh so when i do future uh interviews uh you know maybe more interviews with hanare and other uh new japan pro wrestlers and just other people that i want to do interviews with i could do it as a video format and you guys can definitely watch it from there and then i could take these youtube uh shows that we do together and uh put it up on the Substack newsletter as a video and you know since I'm part of their uh video beta so yeah um you know uh now I have that I've been working really hard on my newsletter I have been trying to keep you guys up to date with all the Kota Ibushi and New Japan stuff all of the best of the super junior stuff um and then now we can get into double or nothing because I'm going to be honest and people are probably just, people might end up attacking me for what I'm about to say next. Uh, just because I'm going to say that I was going to watch double or nothing for the sake of watching um, double or nothing, right? Because I always consider double or nothing to be like the wrestlemania for um uh aew if it's not like all in or all out it's always like those are hey mike what's up yeah shout out to that 24 hour starbucks man we all needed it um so like i said i was going to watch it but then after the whole stupid um, MJF fucking debacle of like, you know, oh, he was a no show at, at um, uh, he, he was a no show at the, the fan fest and then he and he booked the flight, but he didn't get on the flight and then he showed up for work. I guess we're going to start in like really hot and heavy with, with what I'm about to say, just because um, first of all. Any wrestling journalist or journalist in general will not be able to know if someone booked the flight or not. And Taylor Relations is not going to release that information. That information is confidential between the person who purchased the ticket and the talent agent who helped in the process of that. And I'm like, what is wrong with wrestling twitter believing wrestling journalists that want to say some stupid ass shit when they could do a quick uh google search and um you know that google search can definitely tell them that no you cannot find out that information if somebody has decided to um you know board a plane or did not get on that plane that's not for you to know that's not for you to tell that on the internet especially twitter and that could have some legal repercussions but because it's wrestling media no one really takes it seriously until maybe like something else happens but wrestling media is not taken seriously so that's why people will pay five bucks for nothing um when you know my my, my new favorite thing to try to do to people now um is to just be like objection hearsay that's all I want to fucking do to people when they get certain things wrong. It's like, where is your common sense? Your common sense should be able to tell you that you're not allowed to have that information and you're not supposed to disclose that information, even if it's like, you know, very vague. Stop paying for vague shit for five bucks and start supporting people who give like the best quality work that, you know, they can give. Um, but yeah, like you cannot know flight information like that that's that's confidential that's like a federal offense and shit like you're not supposed to know unless you're with the party and if you're with the party that's for like you and the party to know and that's it you can't fucking talk about it um mjf does keep a kayfabe i do agree with that however 
um, what really took me out of it was, for me, like, not to really watch it, was the fact of um, uh, how the information got dropped and how Tony Khan was trying to use a late 90s WCW ploy in order to, um, like, get you to watch it, in order to have you buy it. Um, it wasn't enough for him to uh, to accept the fact that he made one million dollar plus um, because, you know, he had a packed house. Um, almost every seat. Well, obviously, I can't say almost every seat. Every seat was taken if he made the million dollars. So I had to do some math and no, it wasn't Steiner math. Um, you know, it's like you still want more money. And that's only because when you buy like Ring of Honor, like, you know, you're basically don't have that much funds left after that. Uh, but yeah, um, because he used like a night, a late nineties WCW ploy, cause every Bishop did the same tactics and everything to get you to watch WCW over WWE. Um, you know that I was just like, I'm done. I am done. And yesterday. Yeah, I know. Right. Um, by the way, just so you guys know, ads will start in four minutes. So um, I'm just giving you guys a heads up uh, because I am a nice uh, streamer. Uh, but yeah, th that's the thing that I don't understand. Like, where is the outrage of the people that paid $100 to go see MGF? And then all of a sudden his security guards are like, oh, no, he's not coming out. Oh, he's not here. Like, where's that outrage? If this was WWE, there would be a huge outrage and then like, you know, that will get coverage and then WWE would get the bad press. But because it's AEW and we have to follow the fucking kayfabe rules now, it's like, why are you giving a pass to AEW that you wouldn't give to WWE? Like, and then use the, and then use the excuse of, um, AEW is only three years old. And AEW does well and buy uh, pay-per-views and shit like that and all this kind of shit. And I'm like, no, if you're going to have the same energy you have for WWE and your disdain for WWE, have that same thing when things are not right, um, especially if you pay a ticket, right? Because you're the paying customer. You, um, you expect the person that's supposed to be there at the booth to be there, just the entertainment things. So I tweeted, um, I tweeted out saying that like, yo, this is desperate from AEW and MJF and Tony Khan and shit like that. And you can obviously see it. WWE decided to, um, uh, WWE decided to do the whole Sasha and Naomi situation. And that got, that got coverage by like major news outlets that I was just like, I'm not sure what the hell is going on anymore. Right. Like I really can't tell. And then, um, you know, uh, Tony Khan and MJF using the dirt sheets to get the buzz. Like, this is how you don't grow your audience. You don't use the dirt sheets to grow your audience. You use mainstream media to grow your audience. So the way that WWE went about it with the Sasha and Naomi situation, again, they grew their audience because a lot of people are like, oh, shit, like, what do you mean they took off Sasha and Naomi's merch? Like, I got to tune in to see if they say something else on, like, Raw or SmackDown. When it comes to AEW, they cater to the hardcore fans, and that's not how you grow your uh, audience if you do it through the dirt sheets because I know on Twitter there's a lot of people that are like oh I don't know what you know people mean when they say AEW isn't growing their their audience and it's like I just I just explained why you know they're not growing the audience um, if you go towards the hardcore fans plus dirt sheets you are not growing your audience if you go towards um, I guess for, the, for WWE's sake 5% of dirt sheets but like what is it 90 or a little bit more than that um for like mainstream media that you got like new fans and shit um if that makes sense by the way i'm just talking off the off of my head uh whatever comes to my mind i'm basically like saying this i don't have like a script in front of me or anything like that um but these are just like really common sense shit that people should know um, it's really sad that Tony Khan really doesn't know how to grow his audience because right after like double or nothing, like, where do you go from here? You guys didn't do a fucking angle to have like new Japan come in and do something for, for forbidden door. And I'm very worried about that. Um, but I think I should back up a little bit talking about the whole MJF thing. Um, 
but yeah it's just that like um Tony Khan used that late 90s WCW ploy that that Eric Bischoff would use in order to get people to watch WCW over WWE. And I think for me, it kind of backfired because I was like, I shouldn't be having to do detective work uh, to watch a show. I really shouldn't. Um, that's what I like initially felt. I felt like um, I really didn't have I shouldn't be doing the detective work. Um, it's already enough that I cover professional wrestling as it is. Like, I don't, I don't really need to do more work than, than not, you know? Um, and I think at this point when MJF is like, oh, I want to, I want more money for my contract. How is MJF going to get more money for his contract? If Tony Khan keeps hiring people, uh, MJF has never addressed that. <laughs> MJF has never said, Hey, I am your number one asset. And um, I don't know why you keep hiring people, but I want more money. I am better than the rest of the people you hired. And the, and all the people you hired are ex-WWE employees. Bam. Why hasn't MJF said that shit to Tony Khan? Why, why do we have to go back and forth between dirt sheets, MJF, Tony Khan, and being like, hey, he wants more money for his contract? Why do we have to do that? We don't have to. If MJF was smart and he really wanted to uh, hold the company hostage for his contract and getting paid the money that he feels that he deserves, then he should definitely bring it to Tony Khan's attention and really bring it out like that and basically say, every single person you hired is an ex-WWE star. They, they are not um, built from the ground up like I am. I am your number one asset. I am the one that keeps that keeps putting people in seats and they came to see me and everything like that. Um, but yeah, I don't know why he doesn't uh, say that um, at all. I wish he would say that. I really, really do. But he doesn't he doesn't want to say it. And no one has thought about it. And this is why we're in the situation where AEW just regurgitates um, stories from like two years ago, a year ago, or just basically like can't think outside the box. And eventually, like, that's going to be one of their downfalls is where they can't think outside the box and how, you know, to really properly place things on the card and how to do this, how to do pacing um, and definitely get a training center for uh, for people, because for some reason, you know, um, no one likes to train in AEW. If AEW wrestlers are not doing media every single day, the same way that WWE superstars are doing media, the same way that like John Cena was on like an every single media outlet back in the day. If AEW superstars, I guess we're going to call them superstars. If AEW wrestlers are not doing the same kind of work that uh, WWE superstars are doing in terms of media and um and all that kind of stuff and they're not doing that on a daily then um they have no excuse not to train um there was some there was some botches from what i was hearing from what i was reading on the twitter timeline uh even video and just some of the stuff looks so sloppy and like i'm just like yo you you're supposed to be a wrestler in tip-top shape you're supposed to be a wrestler in like you know where I believe that you can kick that guy's ass. But for some reason, you just don't look like or convince me that you're going to be kicking this guy's ass for some reason. Um, but yeah, I just don't understand how people can still praise something that's not at the peak um, shape. I don't know why I want to say pinnacle. Like, I don't know. It's not it's not like a pinnacle. I guess we can say pinnacle, but, um, you know, I just don't understand how people can still be positive on like when there's a lot of flaws, if the flaws are all fixed, then it'll be a better experience for everyone all around and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, um, welcome back guys after the ad. Um, yeah, so you know, for example, going on the whole, um, you know, 
you're supposed to be a wrestler, look like a wrestler, um, you know, make sure that like uh you could beat the guy's ass. Um I feel so bad for Adam Cole. Um, and I know people on Twitter have this thing about like, you know, oh, we shouldn't be talking about body and stuff like that. And I know some people or some Twitter accounts like take it too far, but like if you're in this business to like really look good and make sure that, you know, you don't get hurt, your opponent doesn't get hurt. You definitely do need like the muscle mass to pick up your heavy ass opponents um, because it's not easy to pick up um, uh, another person that has a different body weight than you or maybe the same body weight and stuff like that. So sometimes it's like, you know, you should be working out and stuff like that. Um Again, I just feel bad for Adam Cole because I enjoyed Adam Cole when he was at NXT. I enjoyed his work there. But then when it comes to AEW, I'm just like, um, what happened to that Adam Cole that was fucking great? What happened to that Adam Cole that was great in Ring of Honor for the couple of times that I remember wrestling there? Um, you know, like, what happened to that Adam Cole? Like, his super kicks are really bad. They 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 just look like they're just very sloppy with no power behind it, like no sort of like oomph to it, you know? Um, especially when he was facing Joe. I'm just like I'm just like, I know that doesn't affect Joe the way that it looked like. And I'm here like I don't understand what happened. I don't understand um, you know, the laziness. Um the the laziness of it. Um, you know, I just don't, I just don't get it. Um, all I want is for him to like really come in and be the Adam Cole that like, we know that he can be meaning that like, you know, he's training, uh, he's making sure that he could get a different move set because I don't think super kicks are the way to go half the time. So Uh, but yeah, um, other than that, uh, let's see what else I remember that from just looking. Oh, we have the debut of, uh, Athena and I'm still going to call him Malcolm Bevins, Bevins. I'm still going to do that just because, um, you know, uh, oh, I just remembered I forgot to do something for my stream elements. Uh, but yeah, um, it's okay. I guess that they, you know, came about during the end of what Jay Cargo versus, uh, um, Anna J. Um, I guess it's okay. Um, I mean, I, I'm not really excited that they're there. I don't know. I, I, I'm not sure exactly what they're going to do, but I do know that we're going to get some really good um, promos with um, Malcolm. We're just going to call him Malcolm. Um, but yeah, we're just going to get some really good uh, stuff with Malcolm. Um, that, that That's what I'm just going to say that, um, Oh my god. Okay. Um I'll just with these two, I'll just wait and see about um like what's gonna be happening and like uh you know what's what they're gonna do with them. Uh most likely we are gonna see them on dark just because that happens to everybody. When they come in, they go on dark and it's like, you know, you bring them in, you have them get this amazing reaction and all of a sudden it's like, oh, we can't book you on Dynamite. So you're going to go on Dark and it's like, um, you got to stop signing people. You got to stop signing your favorite toys. Um, you know, uh, it's one thing to have your friends working with you in the business. I, I totally get that. But at the same time, it's like you got to learn how to run a um, a show. You got to learn how to, you know, pick and choose who is going to lead the story, lead the ship and everything. But like, you know, you can't just keep signing everyone that WWE is like, hey, we're going to let you go. Hey, we're going to let you go. Because then what? It's going to turn into 
WWE guys. Our new AEW champion is a WWE guy. If it wasn't for WWE, Punk would not really be known. Really wouldn't. And that's gonna piss off a lot of people, but I don't give a shit. Um but but let's but, but let's save punk for last because you know um they uh let's let's just say punk for last um because you know how i am with him uh so other than that um let's see what else i remember that was just like what the fuck um i heard some really good things about serena and um thunder rosa like just give those two ladies the fucking spotlight man like it's really sad that thunder rosa puts all this time and effort into doing the community outreaches and you know she's also working on her own promotion of uh, mission pro wrestling and you know they haven't when i say they i mean AEW. they haven't really like gave her the spotlight that she deserves um and you know serena d brings this like realness to the ring but the only person that can match her is obviously thunder rosa um i don't know who else can match her maybe athena can match her too um and if people in the chat if you want to help me out and throw out some names of like who can match serena deeb uh just so i can add her to this list um but like you know just give those late oh i mean hikaru shida also um you know just give them the spotlight. Um, it's kind of sad that that we know more about the TBS uh, championship title than we do about our own like AEW women's title. And that's that's really telling. That's really bad, too, um, in my opinion. Um, but I did hear that uh, they really had a good match. And then when I saw the videos uh, and stuff and the pictures that the lovely camera crew took on on um the side of the ring why the hell is aubrey in every single one of those pictures being so over fucking dramatic man like you know if i wanted to use one of the pictures for like a thumbnail if i ever did like a full review of like aew like i'm just gonna take the the graphic um match rather than like you know a, a nice picture because uh Aubrey is in it doing some weird shit and it's like oh my god like you don't have to always like be in the center of it like you know as soon as as soon as wrestlers apply a hold you don't have to necessarily be there unless like you know that if they're in like a chin lock you have to make sure that like it's not really a choke so obviously that that's like one exception but if the wrestler just put and um like an octopus um submission move you can take your time to get over there the wrestler's not gonna go i tap the second that the other wrestler puts on that move like relax you know let the wrestlers tell the story of it and stuff you know um other than that like uh i really want thunder rosa and like serena to like really shine um, also, I don't think that signing more women to the AW women's division, um, pro show, you, you, you already know me, man. I, 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 my brain wants to say I nitpick. I really do nitpick, but like, dude, you know me already. Um, I just want them to improve. That's all I want. I want AEW to improve. Um, you know, there's other people that like hate to hate AEW, but my whole thing is that I want to make sure that I can leave professional wrestling better than it was yesterday when it comes to, you know, fixing flaws. Because if the flaws keep happening, you're going to turn off um, fans to watch it. And it's like, you know, these these flaws have not been taken care of because everyone is in, in their bubble of like, it has to be positive. It has to be positive. And it's like, it's blatant right in front of you from the botches to the stories not making sense to the creativity where they have to piggyback off of shit they did a year ago. Like, it's all that that I want fixed. It's all that that should be fixed to have a stronger product. And just because AEW is 
um, you know, three years old, AEW was born into money. Tony Khan can dip into his dad's savings and make it all go away and make it all like, you know, wonderful and pristine and actually feel like, you know, an actual um, wrestling company that can be taken seriously. I, I know that they just turned three, but when you're when you're born, when you're AEW and AEW is born into money, you can make it look so pristine. You can make sure that everything is correct. You can hire the correct teams to facilitate, you know, uh, who's going to be on Dynamite? What stories are going to go? Uh, who's going to be your flagship people to make sure that the show goes off without a hitch? Who's going to be, oh, well, your flagship people should be the ones that are with the, with the championship title belts and going and pushing the product and making sure that they get fans from all over the world, making sure that AEW gets national coverage, uh, making sure that, um, you know, um, E! News is like talking about AEW. Imagine that. Imagine if like they did a media coverage where they sent Jay Cargo to talk to E! E! News um, about her baddie section, uh, which can be like equivalent to how the Bellas got um, Total Divas and the Bellas got the Bella uh, shows. Like you, you guys are following me, right? Hey, what up, Platinum Yates? John Moxie for life. Eh, okay. If you say so. Um, John Moxie is a hit or miss for me, depending on what happens. But um, you guys follow my logic, right? Like, yeah, pro show. Like, you take certain things from WWE and you use it to your advantage to get the people that, like, you want. The more people you want, the more money you want, the more fan base you want. Like, everybody on Twitter always talks about the baddie section, right? So why not use that to your advantage? Go over to E! News and be like, hey, I know you have a partnership with, like, WWE, but, like, hear us out on, like, the baddie section and why we have the baddie section. And then they could use that to get wwe fans over there and be like yeah you know uh jade is very um charismatic you know she's definitely a boss bitch and she's definitely independent so like for the women in our society who are like fuck men sometimes or the women in our society that are like you know always independent and do it by themselves they will go over to AEW. AEW will get brand new viewership and AEW's uh key demo rate is gonna go up See, it's not that difficult. It really isn't. It's just that Tony Khan wants to control everything, but you can't control everything if you're just one person, especially if you want to control the narrative, especially if you want to control this, control that. Like if the AEW wrestlers have all this free range to do whatever they wanted, to get bookings, to go to seminars, why are they not investing their time to try to get E! News or try to get any other outlets that WWE has, but use it for their own advantage, use it for their own gain and bring it into AEW? Like you go where the trends go sometimes and you also go where the fans go. If you know that women enjoy Total Divas, then why not try to pitch to E! that we have the baddie section and we're better than Total Divas because, you know, whatever the case may be. I'm just saying that, like, this is how easy you can get more fans and build your viewers and stuff like that. No one cares about Forbes. No one, no one truly cares about Forbes. That, that is thinking too low on, on, on a grander scale. Like, if you really do ask somebody about Forbes, yes, Forbes has a really nice, powerful name to it. It has a really powerful traffic to it. It has a really powerful, like, you know, we know, we know what it is, but has that really increased anything for AEW in like any aspect? I don't really think it has. To me, that that's just like, all right, cool. We got on Forbes, but why should it stop there? Why can't they go to like, all the rest of the outlets that WWE has, you know, to make their viewership um, increase and stuff like that. Um, but 
yeah um that's that's how i think that it should go that's how like i would break it down to be like hey there's more stuff you could do via marketing via trying to get you know the people in because uh i just don't think that after this you know you, they're gonna have more fans tuning in um which brings me i guess i guess we can jump to this though that um tk put out that uh for wednesday this wednesday we have um uh john moxie versus cm punk um i don't remember if it's for the title or not um i don't remember if he said it was for the title it might it could be for the title i don't even know i don't even want to speculate on that but um yeah that's true but you know um like i said i just want aew to like do better than what they're doing if they say that they want to increase viewership if they want to have more buzz like you go the wwe route you just make it your own and try to take advantage of it, try to take advantage of it um on your own you don't have to do 100 percent of wwe gave us the uh the blueprint of how to get people so why not just copy off of that but just make it your own think of it like copying someone's homework but not like fully copying someone's homework um like that's how people you know in the industry and marketing and you know streaming uh tend to get ahead that they use someone else's blueprint but then they just capitalize on the one thing that that blueprint doesn't provide and then if you provide it you basically jump off and stuff like that um if darby was on espn i heard nothing about it um i heard nothing about it if anyone else in chat can confirm that that'd be great because i don't i don't even remember i really don't remember um but yeah man i just want like i said i just want AEW to be better um to fix all their flaws and stuff like that okay hold on when you're saying um that sasha was on espn do you mean that they were doing a new segment about the sasha and naomi situation or do you mean that sasha was having an interview and that that and that goes for darby now I'm going to have to look this up for a second. Uh Oh, so okay. Uh the first thing that pops up. Yeah, he was. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah it's totally right. He was on um ESPN. By the way, ESPN put it under. Oh, hold on. Um, ESPN put it under WWE, which I find it funny. Uh, I find it funny that they did so. Uh, both of them were having an interview. Ah. Oh. If Sasha was having an interview, why the fuck was there not like huge ass coverage, and people upset about it? Um, all right, so just so you know, I'm looking at the article. Um, this is interesting. So, someone like interviewed him a tiny bit, wrote about it, and stuff like that. Very interesting. Um, but see, the thing is that, like, that should have been plastered like all over Twitter, all over social media. To be like, hey, Darby Allen was on ESPN. Um, I don't know why it didn't pop up on my timeline. Like it would have, it would have popped up. Um, by the way, you know I'm always thinking outside the box to try to help, um, to try to help like wrestling organizations and like my wrestling buddies. Like I'm always thinking outside the box. So don't think like you know, I I think that AEW is bad or anything it's just that i want to be able to fix the flaws that aew has and if i could think outside the box i will i will say it 
Um, I'm talk I'm talking way before now. Oh, uh, then, then honestly, um, that doesn't help in this situation if you mean that. So two years ago, Sasha Banks was on ESPN. Um, but yeah, but like little stuff like that, where like the wrestler is doing media stuff and that gets pushed and, you know, because people tune into like, um, they tune into, um, ESPN and like all the like hottest things. So yeah, you know, <laughs> um, what am I doing tomorrow? Uh, sure. I guess, um, Let's have you come back for In My Opinion tomorrow. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm just going to be the same way I am on there, on that, that I'm, I am here. Um, yeah, so I just really think that, um, you know, if you're going to be in the business and if you want the I'm the independent contractor, like, title, you also have to, like, do the social media stuff, too, and, like, reach out to people um you know reach out to people to make sure that people are talking about the company that you love like you know the same way that i'm on here and i'm like new japan everything and like make sure you uh follow me for all new japan coverage and stuff like that like it's the same way like i go out of my way to really tell you why you should be invested in new japan pro wrestling i go out of my way to tell you guys um, why AEW needs to fix the things that they do. They have all the talent in the world. It's just, it boggles my mind that um, Tony Khan allows the flaws to keep happening. And it's like, you know, there was a reason why I stopped I, I stopped before um, doing podcasts because I kept ranting about Cody Rhodes. And after I took that really nice long break from podcasting, um, I came back and I just didn't really care about Cody Rhodes when he was still in AEW, but I still cared about the product, uh, because that's what I, I love what I do. I love wrestling. I love everything about it. And I care about each and every single person, like to try to help them get over. I care about the sport way more than the fucking gatekeepers out there. So I'll say that, um, but yeah, there's just certain things I just want AEW to fix. It might sound like. I'm coming after them for like all the small things, but if you don't fix the flaws, how are you ever going to improve? It's the same way in life, you know? Um, oh, by the way, people do not like me saying Cody Rhodes about AEW at all. Um, to the point where like I had to block one idiot because he was stupid. Um, but yeah, you know, um, but other than that, like it's the same thing in life, right? Like, if you're not willing to grow and expand your mind and try to be as open-minded as possible, I'm not saying to be open-minded for every fucking little thing because you can't really do that. Uh, most of us are like set in our ways and that's totally okay too. And it's okay to agree to disagree. It's all right to do that also. But if you're not growing or changing your perspective when someone gives you a different alternative or like think of it this way, you know, are you really growing? Are you really wanting to grow... <laughs> <laughs> are you really like wanting to grow and stuff like that um you know uh i just i just really care about like the things that i want to see um get fixed that's all um another thing too part of double or nothing um let me see what else um oh i guess we could talk about it since like i have a i have a tweet about it um you know uh Ruby Soho doing uh the sharpshooter. Jeez. Um first of all, I would just like to say something. So um this is a PSA, a public service announcement. Um I do not um thank you, Prosha. I agree I, I appreciate that. Um first of all, getting back to my PSA, um I do not appreciate when, um, you know, I ask a very valid question, right? Basically, like, you know, I, I don't, I still don't understand it. If you want to learn how to do the sharpshooter, all you have to do is just, you know, contact Brett, contact Natty, Tyson Kid. They'll teach you how to do a sharpshooter. My one issue with the way that um, Ruby did it, 
I'm still a little like, how the fuck did her leg collapse under her while she while while she was doing it? She like turned and then somehow when she went to go sit, her leg collapsed. And normally I would think that, you know, during the match, Britt probably would have worked on her. Um, hey, Dexter, what's up? I know, right? I'm just I'm just uh talking about it right now because I have like a little PSA. Uh so you know, I would think at first that like um Britt was working on her leg. Like if somebody would have told me on my tweet, um, because I really asked a harmless, valid fucking question about it. Um, if somebody would have told me, oh, Britt was working on, on her leg, fine, understandable why her leg would collapse. But if nobody was able to tell me why her leg was was gonna collapse, I was just gonna be like, yo, people are like posers in a way like they just want to do sharpshooters for the sake of the pop and also for the sake of getting over when they can't get over on themselves just saying um so here's my psa don't ever come into my tweets and sort of indirectly dismissing my question or dismissing me wanting to learn more about a particular subject when I'm looking at it through a critical eye, because I think my credentials like speak for themselves of like everything that I've done in the business and, you know, me working for WWE, I don't care how many times I have to say it. That's my greatest accomplishment. If you guys get upset, that's okay. Um, you know, and then me transitioning back onto the Indies to help behind the scenes. Um, I have like my vlogs on YouTube. I have my interviews like, I know what I'm talking about when it comes to wrestling. Please, for the future, do not come into my tweets and indirectly um, dismiss me uh, when you don't know anything about me. Because I would not do that to somebody unless somebody gave me a reason to dismiss them as well. If you don't know my background, if you don't know my content, if you don't even want to watch my content, that's fine. Just do not ever come into my tweets to indirectly dismiss me when I'm asking a very valid question that nobody could give me an answer to other than mistakes happen. This is live. They probably, um, you know, practiced it or they probably like... Um, you know, did it a million times or Ruby probably knows it a million times. Like if that's the case, if you truly know how to do the move a million times, especially a sharpshooter where like, I don't know, I guess messing up will be like 5% of the, of the time. It's not like doing high flying moves where you can mess up like 99% of the time because you don't know how those ropes are. You don't know how the ropes are like, if they could be slippery, um, if they're like going to, loosen up and stuff like that um and whatnot so yeah pro show i just liked your your damn tweet that says you have been dismissed you're lucky i like you <laughs> i'm just saying <laughs> you're, you're lucky <laughs> you're lucky i like you <laughs> um but yeah, like, you know, if, if they were doing high flying moves, then like, I wouldn't really be upset. But if you're going to be doing a sharpshooter in tribute to, um, to Owen Hart and the Hart family, you know? Um, so it's like, you got to do it right. If you're not doing it right, don't do it. If you never did it, at least either ask for help or, you know, try it out before the show uh dex says it's the fact she trapped her foot underneath brit that's harder than just messing it up if you sit in it properly all right so dex over here has uh some brownie points for me i hope that dex likes uh brownies um i don't know you want high five points because thank you for letting me know that and my voice may sound sarcastic. I'm not being sarcastic. I really appreciate you mentioning that to me, that she trapped her foot. And I guess, I guess if you trap your foot like that, it's even harder to like even try to readjust. 
Um, but like, you know, instead of telling me on my tweet that, um, like, you know, oh, there, there's like a bunch of possibilities and stuff like that. Like, I just want the one logical one. Like, that's a very logical thing to do where like you could trap your foot. But then again, it's like, again, how do you trap your foot? <laughs> oh, my God. I guess she yeah, I guess you're right. She didn't have like the base for it. But again, the point still stands. If I'm asking a question for knowledge because I thought that was the most weirdest, awkward thing to ever see in my life of watching wrestling um, and actually being in the ring for like a little bit for like training that still counts. Um, you know, uh, I'm just like, that's so awkward. Uh, hey, so did the people wearing green symbolize anything? I noticed that Ruby and Joe wore green. The only thing that it symbolizes is money. They got their check. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I I honestly don't know, dude. I don't know. Um, it's the same thing with like Jade all of a sudden like wearing green, even though I think that's probably because she's named Jade. Um, but other than that, it's like I don't know why they were wearing green. Now, if you ask me why certain people were wearing white, other than that crazy ass anarchy of destruction match. When when a wrestler wears white, that means they're going to like you know. Win. Ruby and Joe both wore oh both yeah both wore green. And Adam, oh yeah about that the Owen Hart uh cup winners. Um, first of all, yeah her hair was pink and green too. Like I don't I don't know anymore, man. Like I. I was able to tell you in the beginning what this meant, what that symbolized when it came to AEW. Now I'm just like, yo, ask me stuff about New Japan. <laughs> Cause I could tell you more stuff about like New Japan than anything else. Um, but yeah, like, um, I don't know, man. Uh, but getting back to the whole uh Owen Hart thing, um, I do want to buy those belts. Okay. The belts that they were presented with. I was like, yo, these are very pretty. I want one. Like, uh, I hope it's not a lot of money um, if it ever comes out as like a replica. But I would want that Brett that, uh, well, imagine Bret Hart getting his own belt also. Um, but I would definitely love um, the Owen Hart belt. I would love that. Um, I, uh, yeah, I would love that. Um, as for Brit and Adam Cole winning, Honestly, I could tell you this, though. I didn't really give a shit about the, the tournament because I was like, how do you have a tournament? Give a surprise. Uh, people, um, are they... See, my, my brain was like, you know, are they even fans of Owen Hart and shit? Um, yeah, I saw that. I saw that they were modeled after the Stampede belt. I was like, yeah, that has to be... That has to be it. Um, other, like... You know, I didn't care about the tournament because it just felt so random. It just felt like, hey, we're going to put you here. We're going to put you here. We're going to have a tournament. Bam, that's it. Like, I need I need brackets. So that way I can, like, talk with you guys and be like, this is why this person should win. This is why this person, like, shouldn't win. Like, you guys remember when I did the whole thing about the New Japan Cup and explained to you guys why Tama should have won the New Japan Cup? That's, that's what I could have did with the Owen Hart uh, tournament. But... We got this. I really don't care that Britt and um, Adam Cole won. I really don't. However, now that they won, I really do think that they're going to start with uh, Sammy and Tay versus Britt and, Cole and Adam Cole. Like, uh, I really do think that's going to happen. Um, I, I hear the chatter. I hear the tweets, you know, but... um. I just, I just really don't care. I really don't want it. Um, what else? Um, yeah, anarchy. Um, that's always the best bit of any tournament. PWG, yeah, yeah, right. The bracket talk, like I fucking love that. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I honestly like. I honestly don't care. Um, you know. I understand why Joe wouldn't win in the situation, but at the same time, it's like, 
and okay cool what what else what what else we got right um the anarchy of destruction i'm just whatever that was that was like a whole fucking mess um we had oh yeah i'm also skipping the young bucks versus matt and jeff because i've just if you guys heard me on uh smack the raw pod i basically said that i am not interested in the match and i i don't really care who wins or who comes out because it's like how many times are we going to see the Hardys versus uh, the Young Bucks? Um, to which Kyle of the Square Circle podcast was like, no one, no one is like a historian like you, Marie. And I'm like, this is why you guys have me. <laughs> I'm there to let you know, like, this already fucking happened. Like, it, nothing new is going to happen in the match. Like, no, nothing, nothing new is going to happen, really. Nothing new. Um, but yeah, th- th- if you guys wonder why I skipped it, because I just don't care. Um, the other tag match, the triple threat. I heard that Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus retained the titles. Um, okay. I mean, I just hate the fact that certain teams, uh, tend to, uh, like have that background when they should be the, the center of attention and the forefront because they're champions. That's just me. That's just my little pet peeve of like, if you're a champion, we have to, like, really speak your name. Like, I really want these guys to have that Roman Reigns effect and the Usos effect where you know who the champion is. And people are going to be like, ah, oh, yeah, I know who they are. If I went outside today in New York City and I decided to boot up my phone and take video or audio and go around asking people, hey, do you know who the AEW World Tag Team Champions are? Most likely, none of them are are not going to know. But if I say, hey, do you know who the WWE Tag Team Champions are? Most likely, I'm going to get a response. So I'm just saying that, like, you know, if you want to come out as a star, start acting like a star, start looking like a star, start feeling like a star. And I just, that's all I want. (laughs) It's like for you to feel like a star. You put so much work and, and, um sacrifices into being a wrestler into being a referee into being a commentator into being a backstage interviewer that if you're not walking around with that chip on your shoulder or being as proud as you are to be entering into this business that there are no guarantees then what the fuck is the point like i don't understand what the fuck is the point of you being in this business if you're just happy to be here and my brain is like wanting me to tell you guys to adopt that Sasha Banks mentality <laughs> where instead of eating that pizza and that hot dog on a handshake, you start eating steak and you start believing in your own hype. But please be careful uh, when you're believing in your own hype, because uh, sometimes that shit could turn ugly. But other than that, like believe in yourself and like the more you believe in yourself, the more fans you'll get, the more money you get, the more merch you will get. Like... I'm dropping fucking wisdom on you guys, in a way. Um, And I hope wrestlers out there fucking hear this too. Like, you know, there are little things to improve. Um, We could talk about, like, a lot of people that have improved their, like, social media presence um, and stuff like that. And just, you know, living in the fact that um, they have more fans, more opportunities, and stuff like that. Um. I guess we could talk about the main event, <laughs> even though ads start in two minutes. Um, um, Pro Show, you have approved everything. <laughs> um, you definitely improved. Like, um, you know, I enjoy that you are growing and decided to. Uh, have your name uh change your name to the pro show and i think that it works uh because you know you can talk with anybody especially with um with your show uh in my opinion i was gonna i was gonna call it let's i was gonna call it let's uh debate but i do think that um yeah we're gonna talk about the main event in a moment uh just to remind everybody you have a minute onto onto ad start so you have that uh twitch prime Throw me, uh, throw me that Twitch Prime, uh, so you can hear my thoughts on on the on the main event, um, or you could give some subs, either one. Um, there's no easier way around it. Sorry, 
Uh, but uh, to the pro show before I get to um, you know, talking about um the main event. Um, what I really enjoy about uh your uh, in my opinion, segment is that um you can have that with anybody. It doesn't necessarily have to be like wrestling based. It could be like anybody else in like any other industry and stuff. Um, and have those really raw emotional talks where it shows two different sides of a coin or a story that you're trying to tell or something that you found interesting and you're like, hey, let's get to the bottom of this. Let's ask the real hard questions. Um, and, you know, I guess that's what I tend to do sometimes where like I tend to go into like a deep thought of like whatever it is, but yours like can go anywhere. Um, it doesn't have to be limited and um you know i really do enjoy those type of uh shows especially if like if i'm interested in a particular topic that like you decide to choose and pick the right speaker like man like your shit could blow up like really really good um so i hope that like you know um in the years to come uh that will bring you like the most joy and definitely bring you the most like fruitful of like your podcasting career because that that's really like a groundbreaker to uh like just really have those hard questions asked and instead of like feeling it's all like fucking logical shit um because sometimes feelings and emotions can get the best of people when you're trying to figure out like the facts and sometimes the black and white uh sometimes it might need gray in there and stuff like that like you know um for example the freaking um, I'm going to go off on a tangent. I'm not even sure if I'm going to leave this in when I uh, re-upload this to, to my sub stack. But Pro Show, you should have took advantage of the Amber Heard uh, versus Do uh, Johnny Depp trial and like get people on your show and do like, uh, in my opinion, for each and every single week that um, had the trial. Um, you could have fucking did that shit and you would have like soared all the way to getting twitch affiliates and then you would have probably got fucking partner at that point like and then you would have made money on it and i'm like yo you could have did that you could have did that for the amber heard versus giant depth thing um just so that way um you can you know have those conversations with people uh because i think those are important conversations to have and also you know important conversations in the wrestling business about certain things and stuff like that so you know um yeah dude like trust me man i was saying to myself that the the times that i wasn't streaming i was like yo i could just watch the fucking trial and i could get in a massive influx of viewers and stuff like that and they can listen to me talk about my opinion the same way that you know you guys here can definitely you know listen to me talk about wrestling I was just like, whoa, but I was too fucking entertained by somebody else that I was watching. And I was like, oh, this is, this is fun. You know, uh, this is fun. Um, but you know what you can do, right. Is get people who are pro gun and not, and not pro gun. You know, I don't, I don't know what the, oh, so wait, anti gun and pro gun. There we go. There we go. <laughs> you could do that. You could get two people. You could get one person one week where they are pro guns and they'll explain why they want guns in their houses and why they need it versus someone who's anti gun. And, you know, you don't even have to like spin the story. You can let them tell their side and then you could come in with, with questions that can like, you know, counter it maybe, or like, you know, try to dig in deep um, for it. Um, but yeah, like I said, um, the only reason why I'm talking this long for talking to, um, uh, the pro show is because I want to make sure that you guys are here listening to me talking about the, the main event of AEW, but, uh, I tend to think about you guys and see how I can like help you guys, um, about certain things. Like, you know, just don't be afraid of asking the hard questions and really like, um, doing things where people wouldn't accept it. Like, you guys remember when I was supposed to interview uh, Jack Gallagher? So, like, that never happened. They never got back to me. So I'm just like, all right, cool. Um, but 
I still have people coming into my mentions, whether it's on Twitter or it's on Reddit, and you know they'll 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 say some stupid shit of like, oh, are you still giving sex pests like a platform? And I'm here like, why does that matter? Like, like you know, can you go back into my log and tell me, um, where like I interviewed him? So yeah, I, I always look out for you guys. So now, main event of AEW, uh, Double or Nothing. Uh, <laughs> oh, Greg. Um, yo, for a second, I thought Greg was uh, Dexter because both of them have uh, red in their name. And I was like, I was reading that and I, I didn't catch on. I didn't catch on for like, oh, it's fucking Greg. What up, Greg? Um, so yeah. CM Punk is our champion. Um, I saw the ending sequence of how this happened, where Hangman was going to do the buckshot lariat, and he sort of stopped. Um, hesitate. Hesitation is the word, okay? Hesitation is the word. Um, <laughs> um, he hesitated, and that's when CM Punk... Uh, basically, like, I guess, I don't want to say stunned, sort of like spun him around so that he could be um, dizzy and then did the, the GTS and got the one, two, three. Um, and I was there like, all right, um, I honestly do not care enough to really, like, rip him apart. I understand why... Tony Khan will put the belt on CM Punk, even though I don't think he really deserves it. Um, just because you beat a bunch of guys, have this story, the only one that's like telling the story in a way. Um, and then you all of a sudden like um get a championship opportunity. And again, it's an ex WWE guy. Um, if we really look at the the championship lineage. I don't know why I was going to say something else, but lineage, right? Um, it's Chris Jericho was the first one. So Chris Jericho, um, you know, ex WWE. Um, then we have Kenny, who's at uh, New Japan. Then we had, oh no, it's Moxley. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. Jericho, WWE. Moxley, WWE. Um, Kenny, New Japan. Hangman, self-made. Because no company ever made him and he's not that big of a star. Um, yes, Dexter definitely has a point here, which I'm going to read in a second. And then now we have CM Punk, which is WWE. So it's like why uh dex says here um personally i think it's a step backwards for AEW. it could have been it could have made page more legit in the eyes of the casuals yes um i totally agree with that um but my only thing is that if they would have left the belt on page right does page still stay in the background because again it's like i don't know who the champions are because they're not front and center they're not in major storylines they're not you know talking enough there's not enough buzz on our aw champions for me to remember who's who where like who's where and stuff like that um i'm always gonna go back to the wwe logic of like i know who roman reigns is i don't really know you know hangman anymore i don't know jungle boy and luchasaurus anymore i don't know well, I can't say I don't know Jade. I I Jade is very like in your face. I'm that bad bitch. Like I get it. I I get what she's doing. I get Thunder Rosa too, but it's just like so messy. Um, what up, Jersey Devil? Uh, <laughs> apathetic existence at wrestling. Jesus, yeah. <laughs> um, but my my one big takeaway is that because CM Punk is um our champion 
I will say this though. I do remember Punk being champion in Ring of Honor. I do remember most of his matches. Um, because again, before like I cursed the shit out of him after his whole slander shit, um, I was a huge CM Punk fan, but now it's fuck punk. Um, so people are saying this is gonna be the summer of punk. Um Punk is going to drive AEW the same way that he did Ring of Honor where he gets to do whatever the fuck he wants. He gets to create stories however the fuck he wants. If he doesn't, if you don't agree with him, just expect maybe like, you know, some petty ass bullshit. Um, That's why I find it kind of interesting where like Tony Khan will go off the handles and be like, yeah, we're going to do this, this and this and this. And if you don't agree with Tony Khan, you know, he's going to be petty as fuck too. If you guys saw the media scrum, um, I just thought that first of all, very fucking unprofessional of him from like start to finish in a way from the from the clips that i've seen i have the whole video but yeah from the clips that i've seen just fucking unprofessional um what i don't like <laughs> well actually we're not gonna get there yet what what i found funny was that um tony khan was answering someone's question um and he gave this answer and then he switched over to somebody else Oh, yeah. It was about the Ring of Honor thing. So, yeah, I guess we could get into it. Um, so, we all know that Tony Khan bought Ring of Honor. And almost every wrestler was like, oh, my God, Tony Khan saved Ring of Honor. Well, wrestler and everybody else was like, oh, my God, he saved Ring of Honor. Why would you tell wrestling media that because Ring of Honor does not do well in pay-per-views that they don't sell well when it comes to pay-per-views. Why would you tell them that that's why they don't have a big card? That's why they're not like as big as like a double or nothing where that shit went to one in the morning. Um, why would you tell the wrestling media that, you know, because Ring of Honor doesn't do well in pay-per-view uh, sells that you're going to get a less than perfect card, match card, like, I was like, didn't you once say that Ring of Honor was, like, the love? Like, you're, you're the company that you love the most? But yet then you're going to be like, oh, because it doesn't make much money. Uh, this is why you guys are going to get really horrible match cards. That's really bad to say. So he says that. And then he jumps over to another um, uh, wrestling media person who asks a question and finishes his answer for that. <laughs> Excuse me. And the lady he respond, responded to shook her head. And he was all like, oh, I'm sorry. Like, um, are, are you upset at me? And I'm here like, oh, my God, this guy. What I want to make light about it is that. Do you guys understand that he likes to people, please? And the more that you people please, the more you stay inside this box. Uh, because you can't please everybody. I totally get that. You can't please everybody. I can't please everybody. Everyone in my chat can't please everybody. But you need to like phrase certain things and not say what you what you're actually like thinking sometimes. Um, and then that's very telling to be like, hey, Ring of Honor doesn't, you know, sell much. So why not, like, you know, not give you guys the best card in the world? Um, and, you know, because he was so frantic about, um, did I uh, did I upset you? First of all, I think it was a she. I don't remember, like, who was asking it. First of all, if I was there and he saw me shaking my head and then he comes back to me and says, are you are you angry with angry with me? You guys know I, I would just go off and be like how do you tell us tell us that about ring of honor when ring of honor is supposed to be the company that you love the most and that's why you saved it like i don't i don't get that like that's really unprofessional um so let me see uh dexter says oh no okay so yeah oh yeah so it is dexter that i'm up to um Okay, my chat needs to stop going up. Okay, I said I read that. Oh my god. This this chat bar. 
It's so annoying. Um, I was skeptical on TK taking over Ring of Honor, but his comments in that scrum are so shocking as an owner just tearing down his own company. Yes. <laughs> Tony and AEW basically did everything except pissing the mouth of Ring of Honor. Yep. Uh, AEW at Supercard of Honor was, yep. Definitely, man. Like, a, yep. Uh, that was his attempt to kill what Ring of Honor had built and do what he can from his own memories of it. Yes, 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 yes. Um, you know, the writing is on the wall. Um, and it's really sad when AEW fans want to, like, dismiss other ones. Um, like, dismiss people who have these ideas and who have, like, the knowledge to be like, you know... Why why is this happening? Why is this why is this doing this and whatnot? You know? Um it's just really, 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 really annoying. Um, but yeah, um, I could tell you this though, that um we're definitely gonna get a lot of punk. Um, all the stories are gonna go punk's way, um, which are not gonna be original. So don't expect anything original. He's probably gonna rehash certain shit that he did in the past, like like how we saw, um, especially him coming out to like you know, his feud with MJF uh, was rushed. And then the rehashing or the calling back to when he was in Ring of Honor and he did the whole um, bloody interview thing like he did when he had Daphne by his side and he was going at the Raven. It should have been Daphne. Um, he was going at the Raven back in Ring of Honor, which I honestly, that feud with, when, with he had with Raven... I fucking loved it. I I really did. I enjoyed that really, really, uh, really well because Raven is one of my favorite wrestlers. So like, you know, I enjoyed that. And then to do it again with MJF, it's like, it doesn't seem right. Um, and then also uh, with Punk coming out to his old theme song in Ring of Honor with the shorts and how he looked back then. I'm just like, you know, inside of me was like, you know, don't give in to it. Um, but I, uh, it brought back memories. Um, it did, but again, if you want to bring in a new crowd that does, that does not follow you and you want a new chapter in your wrestling career, you make new stories. You don't go back and, uh, do callbacks when, um, your callbacks start super late. <laughs> um, that's the best way for me to put it because if, if you're building a feud of all callbacks, right? Um, you start at the very beginning, you make it known to the fans that this is going to be like a callback feud. So you understand why you should be more emotionally invested and you should understand why this is like a love letter to the fans that followed you from the very beginning, rather than doing it towards the late end of the feud where it doesn't make sense. And people have to go do research and nobody wants to do research. We we already seen that. Nobody wants to do research. So if you want to do a feud where you have callbacks in your feud, make sure that that is apparent and that is known in the beginning of your feud rather than the end of your feud. Because it's the same thing with writing. If you're writing a novel and you have an important plot point you got to make sure that at the beginning of your book where it is the exposition of your book or um short story or whatever you're writing it's there in plain writing and then you go off from there and you make sure that that plot point that's important is sprinkled throughout the book sprinkled throughout the chapters and whatever the hell else you want to do with that um but yeah, I am now officially going to be watching AEW from afar. I am not really going to support the company. If I have to talk about something, I will talk about something. Um, but other than that, like, congratulations to CM Punk for becoming our new AEW world champion. Uh, but other than that, like, I have no fucking interest. Um, I'm all about having the young guys get built up, having the young guys push the ship and basically like carry that belt. Um, punk does not need to, but I guess if you want to say that punk has value in his name to sell tickets, sure. But I will say this, 
do not get your hopes up for a Kenta versus CM Punk at Forbidden Door because CM Punk was already like, no, I don't want to face Kenta. They asked him the big question. He said no. Now he could be working us. He could be fooling us. I don't know. But for someone that loves to take someone's full fucking moveset without permission and basically like not in a way where it kind of honors kenta and by the way kenta is still um wrestling so it's like if he was retired i wouldn't be making a big deal out of it um but for someone that dodges kenta dodges osprey and that's about it because kenta and osprey were the only two people to call out cm punk to be like hey i want to fight you other than like Jason David Frank, the Green Power Ranger, but that should never happen because Punk knows he can't fucking stand in the ring or octagon with any of these guys. Uh, they will fucking kill him. They will annihilate him. Do not expect an Okada versus CM Punk because <sighs> do you guys honestly think that will make fucking money? Like, I don't want to see Okada face Punk. I really don't. Um. I'm trying to really think like, would it, would it matter, you know? Um, and I also would not want to see Jay White versus Punk. And if that happens, Jay White better do like five fucking Blade Runners on CM Punk in his home fucking town and get the fucking victory. Because as much as this is going to be in the United Center in Chicago, CM Punk has been quiet about it ever since the announcement dropped. The only person that, you know, shared the common interest is basically um, Jay White to tell everybody, yeah, we have this announcement going on. And the reason why the Forbidden Door sold out is because of Jay White. Jay White better add that to his accolades of like, you know, he sold out the United Center single-handedly. The same way that we say that he sold out um, Madison Square Garden single-handedly. You know, he's uh, wrestling's number one asset. Punk ain't fucking number one asset of anything. Um, he tends to dodge everybody. And he, like I said, he hasn't said a word about it, which I'm kind of like, yo, this is in your hometown. Are you not proud of this? Um, you know. Oh, and also the other thing, too, is that I'm waiting for Punk to abandon AEW. Um, I'm waiting for that to happen. Because if you're able to abandon a place once when you could have saved everybody the trouble and time and stuff like that by um, doing your own independent. What's the word I'm looking for? Your own independent, like, basically you get your ass up and like you go take yourself to the hospital and you make sure that from your doctor, you know, you're, uh, you're okay and everything. Like he could have saved everybody the trouble by doing it himself rather than waiting for his wife to tell him, yeah, honey, you got to get a second opinion. Or, you know, um, allowing the doctor to give him a bunch of Z-Packs. Uh, so, yeah, I'll say it again. I am, gonna, I am waiting until CM Punk abandons AEW. Uh, Dexter, oh. Uh, Jersey Devil says Phil Brooks ain't doing no job in Chicago, especially. Dude, I don't care. I would definitely be like, bro, you're doing a fucking job. You have not uh, hyped up uh, your own fucking hometown for the Forbidden Door. Like, no. I don't give a shit. You like, he says that he said during the media scrum that it's, it's all a teamwork, right? Everyone pitches in, bro. You have not said shit about the forbidden door. How is it? How is it teamwork? No. Uh, Dexter says if the main event isn't the bullet club versus undisputed elite, I would be very surprised. Really? <laughs> you want bullet club versus undisputed elite? I don't want it. You know, you know what I would want, <laughs> which, which Dex might be like, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> I want, um, hold on. Uh, okay. So I want, um, the, the undisputed elite versus house of torture. That's what I want. I want evil to come over to the States. Um, I want the Undisputed Elite versus House of Torture. I don't care for Bullet Club versus Undisputed Elite. Um, now I'm gonna... <laughs> huh. 
But all the marketing is Adam Cohen, Jay White. See? Uh, Jay White single-handedly sold out the Forbidden Door at uh, United Center in Chicago. Yep, that's what I'm going to go with. Um, anyway, but yeah, um, you know, I don't care if uh, CM Punk just became the new AEW champion. If you're going to say that everything is a teamwork, but yet then you don't hype up your own love of Chicago, your own love of the idea that we get to fight New Japan pro wrestlers and, um, you know, basically love the fact that it's sold out in a matter of minutes and, um, you know, the endless possibilities, then no, man, you're fucking losing. Um, and people might say that I that that's me just saying that because I no longer like punk. Like, no, you got to put in the work. If you're going to say that everything's a teamwork, that's all it is. I'm looking at it from a business thing. Like at this point when I'm saying this, it's not because, um, I hate them. It's not because I say fuck punk. It's a business thing. Like you should be putting in the work too, you know? Um, but yeah, that's like my, what you guys may consider an angry review of, of, um, you know, uh, what do you call it? Um, AEW double or nothing. And a little bit of the media scrum. Um, I will have the media scrum up on my sub stack, um, uh, either tomorrow or Wednesday. Um, I don't want to bombard everybody cause I have my Hanari interview up, uh, which, you know, you guys can ask me questions, uh, when, after I come back from a quick, a quick break, uh, because I need, uh, more water. I gotta get freshen up and, um, we could talk about, you know, best of the super juniors, uh, my Hanari interview and, um, stuff like that. So, um, make sure to, uh, just stay around and we'll be back in a second. I'm going to put the starting soon screen on just so that way you guys can watch the little highlight video. So, uh, yeah, I'll be back. <laughs> 